Welcome to the beginning of this multi-part series about spiral dynamics. This is going to be at least six parts, and I want to focus each part on every single stage of the spiral dynamics model. So we're going to have a part on blue, that's what we have today. We're going to have an episode on orange, on green, on yellow, on turquoise, and finally towards the end, we're going to have an episode about red. The reason I'm leaving red towards the end is because it's less relevant to you guys to most people because most people are evolved beyond red. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm not covering beige and purple, which come before red, the reason I'm not covering those stages is because those are very rudimentary and primitive, and I don't think it's gonna be worth your time to, to have entire episodes about those. But as far as blue, orange, green, yellow, and turquoise, it is worth your time to have episodes about these. Now you might wonder, well, Leo, you talked about spiral dynamics in the past. In fact, I have a whole 90 minute episode called uh, The Ultimate Model of, of Human Development or Human Consciousness. I forget exactly how I titled it. You can search for that on YouTube or on my website. And that's a great episode. It covers the, the entire spiral, all these stages, and it tells you everything about them. But still, there's only so much we can cram into 90 minutes. And I went back and I started just to study spiral dynamics, this model, for my own benefit, for myself, taking a lot of notes on it, and I saw just how much richness and depth and value there is here. By studying this model, my understanding of mankind, civilization, politics has, has just become extraordinary. It's so easy to see all the problems that are happening all around the world, and also within myself and where I fit within the spiral. So that's been very valuable, so I felt like it would be a, a good idea to, to help you to, to extract that kind of value out of this model because I think that most people still don't really see the power of spiral dynamics. What is spiral dynamics? Uh, it might sound complicated, and it sort of is, but also it's not that complicated. Spiral dynamics is a model developed by Don Beck and Christopher Cohen based on the work of a professor uh, by the name of Claire Graves. And he developed this psychological model with these different colored stages, which represent the evolution of human consciousness, both individually and collectively, across all of human history. And it ends up being a pretty damn accurate model. Now, of course, it's just a model. It's not perfect. It doesn't fit everything that happens in the world. And it doesn't account for every single thing that happens in your life. It's a model. But as far as models go, it's you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked at how accurate and useful this model can be. So, just in a, in a brief nutshell, what Spiral Dynamics is telling us is that there are these discrete stages that the human mind passes through. And because our civilizations and our societies are developed out of individual human minds, that's how they come about, where is society taking place but inside the human mind, if you think about it? What structures society? What governs politics? What governs culture and religion and science and innovation, all this stuff? It's ultimately the values and the worldview that is inside of individual minds. And because humans are very hive-like, bee-like, ant-like creatures, we develop these complicated societies, but really, they're not as complicated as we think. A society tends to be at a certain level of psychological and spiritual development. And so that's what this model tracks. That's extremely useful because guess what? You are part and parcel of your society and your culture and your religion and your science and whatever other stuff you buy into and believe in, uh, media, entertainment, 
education, all of this. What is all of this? This is part of society. You have been programmed with whatever is the predominant set of values and worldviews that your society in this day and age has. You see, so wouldn't it be useful to understand how this develops and evolves over time, not just in your society, but all around the world, across all sorts of societies, going back thousands of years, so that you can see where you fit into the bigger picture, and also you can see where you're stuck and where you need to go. And you can also see why other people are stuck at lower levels of development, and you can see what their problems are, and if you want, you can help them to evolve as well. That might be very useful, you see. So this model is both useful individually for your own self-actualization and spiritual development, but it's, it's also perhaps even more useful collectively to understand what the hell is going on in the world. We have a lot of crazy stuff happening in our politics these days, uh, crazy stuff happening with, with, uh, with religion and spirituality and economics and culture wars, all of this sort of stuff. How do you make sense of it? There's so much confusion these days and people are just so unconscious about it and they just uh, bicker back and forth and fight with each other, talk across each other, don't understand each other. And then what you have is you have this sort of polarization and nothing really works and everybody is sort of agitated and bitter at somebody and they don't see the bigger picture. With this bigger picture, you're going to understand everything. You're going to be shocked at how much you understand. So what Spiral Dynamics really is, is it, it's, it's these stages. The first stage is beige, then purple, then red, blue, orange, green, yellow, and turquoise. Each of these colors, these colors are just arbitrary. They don't really mean anything, per se, other than just as a label for a set of values. So what Spiral Dynamics tells us is that you are at one of these stages and you must move to the next highest stage without really skipping over anything. And so you've got to move. So if you're at red, then you got to go to blue, then you're going to go to orange, then to green, then to yellow, then to turquoise. Now, most people usually after they uh, become adults, they get stuck at one of these stages forever in their life because they don't understand that this model exists. They don't have enough perspective to see that there's something higher that they can evolve to. And there's also all sorts of traps that come with navigating this spiral, all sorts of obstacles to the ego from moving up to the next stage. And so we'll be talking, of course, about those to help you to, uh, to get higher. So fundamentally what Spiral Dynamics is, is it's, it's, it's modeling sets of values and cultural memes which govern your life individually and collectively. Why is Spiral Dynamics important? Well, uh, I think I already answered that because it gives you a roadmap to see where you need to go, what's preventing you from getting there, and it helps you to understand and to tolerate the ignorance and lack of development of people below you on the spiral. And that becomes very important because otherwise you're gonna get stuck criticizing those people who are less evolved than you, but you yourself are gonna be wasting time because while you're criticizing others, you're not evolving yourself. What we're gonna cover in these episodes, each episode is gonna focus on a particular color or stage. So this one is gonna be about stage blue. The next one's gonna be about stage orange and so forth. In each episode, we're gonna cover the same sorts of topics. We're gonna to talk about the set of values that define this stage. We're going to talk about a long list of characteristics that define this stage. So you get a real good sense of what the essence of this stage is. We're going to talk about when the stage emerges, why it emerges, what are the forces that cause it to emerge, and then what are the forces that cause it to, uh, to dissipate and ultimately die off and evolve into the next stage. So there's a set of circumstances that causes blue to come forward. It has utility. Then that utility is exhausted. It sort of peaks and then it starts to die off. But then the next stage comes and evolves. We're going to also cover tons of examples, dozens, maybe even hundreds of examples that I've compiled. I spent a lot of time compiling examples of each stage, which are going to be very useful for you 
because it's through these examples that you really understand what these stages are. And it's also going to explain a lot of stuff in the world that you probably don't presently understand or that you misunderstand. We're going to talk about trigger points. What triggers each stage? And there's a specific set of lists of items that trigger each stage. I spent a lot of time thinking about what the trigger points are. And perhaps most importantly, we're going to talk about what it takes to transcend each particular stage. And I spent a lot of time compiling lists and brainstorming ways. What are the specific techniques and methods you could use to actually transcend stage blue into orange and then orange into, into green and then green into yellow and so forth. So that's going to be like the, um, the application of spiral dynamics in your life. Now, I want to make sure to give credit here to the originators of this model because certainly a lot of the ideas that I'm going to be sharing here, I ripped out of books, just straight out of their books. I ripped out of their websites. I ripped out of their, their graphs and their, and their, um, their charts. So uh, credit goes to Claire Graves, Don Beck, Christopher Cohen, and this website that I relied heavily on called spiraldynamicsintegral.nl for Netherlands. Now, let's move into talking about stage blue. What is the essence of stage blue? If we want to give it a title, we could call it absolutist, conformist rule, and the rise of civilization. Blue is absolute belief in one right way and obedience to authority, which was the driving force behind the, ri the rise of civilizations. If you think back to ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, what was going on there in world history? And of course, we shouldn't forget the East, you know, the rise of, of ancient China with the, the empires there and the rise of empires in India, right? Um, and then even in the Middle East, a little bit later, you had the rise of, of empires. So what was going on there? Before, mankind was living, well, very long before in small tribes, but then these tribes started to accumulate and they started to become bigger. And that was the development of stage red. Stage red is a very sort of totalitarian, high, um, um, sort of like tribal, like alpha male, uh, leader of, of the wolf pack sort of um, style of government and social organization. So uh, that, of course, has its limitations and problems, which lead to the rise of blue, because you can't really build a large, well-functioning civilization like the Roman Empire just purely based upon uh, one tribal leader dominating everybody. See, to have the rise of civilizations, you need to develop um, a set of organizing principles for that society. People have to be under the same sort of programming, mental programming, so that they're all on board with the same sort of purpose, and they all have to conform to a certain set of rules and laws. So really, civilization is all about taking a tribe of barbarians and then giving them a bunch of laws and codes, which are enforced by police and a legal system, court system, all this sorts of stuff. So now you're developing a well-functioning bureaucratic civilization. So it's highly bureaucratic. And of course, to do this, what you need is you need the development of writing, which is what led to the to the rise of these giant civilizations. You couldn't do that before you had writing because you need to keep accounts. You need to take taxes. You need to keep ledgers and and you need to you need to be able to write down names of all your bureaucrats and you need to have a postal system. You need to have roads interconnecting. So you're you're basically creating a rudimentary network. It was sort of the rise of the Internet, the early Internet that allowed these civilizations to develop. And now that, that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't our internet. That was the internet of 2,000 years ago through writing and through these networks of, of roads and trade routes and, um, and laws and all the institutions that enforce those. Stage blue relies very heavily on belief in some sort of higher authority, a god. And this god is usually a father figure a stern father figure who lays down the rule of law. And if you cross him, he will punish you. He's not a forgiving, lenient God. He is like that hard-ass dad 
stepdad who will beat you if you do uh, something even a little bit wrong. It's like that. That's the essence of blue. Now, as I'm going to be telling you all sorts of lists and characteristics and values, I want you to be careful about judging this stage. Try to look at every stage we'll be talking about as objectively as possible without saying, oh, this is bad and evil and this, this one is good. It's not about good and evil. It's about just what is necessary for humans to survive. So be careful about these judgments. You might say, oh, well, I don't believe in God. And so this stage is false. Or you might say, oh, Leo, but these civilizations, they were so cruel and they had slavery and all this, and that means that they were bad. No, don't make these judgments. Yes, that's technically true, but we'll get to that. We'll talk about the, do the downsides of, uh, of these stages at the very end. Another es essential feature of stage blue is that it's collectivist and individ versus individualistic. So every stage on the spiral is, e is either going to lean more collectivist or more individualistic. The collectivist stages are going to emphasize sacrificing of the self for some higher cause or organization, or in this case, the civilization. Whereas the individualistic leaning colors and stages here, they're going to emphasize more the development of the self rather than the collective and the group. So what happens is that each stage sort of alternates where you have blue, which is collectivist, then it shifts to orange, which is more individualistic, then orange shifts back to green, which is more collectivist, and then that shifts back to yellow, which is more individualistic, and so on it goes. So it's a sort of oscillating, swinging back and forth, pendulum kind of deal. But the essence of blue is that you're sacrificing yourself for your particular civilization in the hopes of getting a deferred reward, oftentimes in the afterlife. So there's a strong emphasis on religion and the afterlife. Now, let's give you a list of all the values of stage blue. And this, don't underestimate the power of this list. These keywords that I'm about to give you, if you, if you take a stage blue person, and you talk at him with these keywords, you are going to become his best friend. You are going to resonate with all the deepest stuff that he believes, believes in. That's what values are all about. That's why values are so important. And each stage has its own unique set of values. So if you have a, a sneaky, manipulative politician, he could literally take all the keywords in this list and go with a bullhorn to a, a rally, a political rally, and say these keywords. And if the keywords are properly aligned with the, the members of his audience, let's say the members of his audience are stage blue, then he will win their undying support because he will tell them precisely what they believe in and what they want to hear. And of course, this can be a very dangerous thing because it creates a sort of echo chamber because people aren't looking for a new set of values. Most people are just blindly looking to reinforce their existing set of values without thinking in an objective manner about the limitations of their existing set of values. So here we go. And uh, before I even tell you that, one more, one more uh, comment. I don't know what stage you're at, most of you who are watching videos for me, just to even watch my videos, you already have to be probably at stage at least a high orange, green, maybe yellow. Uh, a stage blue person probably isn't watching one of my videos. So when you hear these words, they may not resonate with you, these, these value keywords. But when I talk about your stage, so if you're at stage yellow and I'm going to be talking about stage yellow, in, in the next few episodes, all the keywords I'm going to say, they're going to completely resonate with you. And you're going to be saying like, yes, 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 Leo. That's perfect. That's exactly what's, what's right. That's exactly what we should be doing in the world. So I want you to notice that. And if you are at stage blue, then everything I'm about to say is going to resonate with you completely. But on the other hand, if you're not at stage blue, if you're at stage yellow, a lot of the things I'm going to say right now are not going to resonate with you at all. And it's not going to make much sense to you. You have to get good at being able to look at the world from the perspective of 
the stage that we're talking about and not from your perspective. That's very important to be able to jump between perspectives. And that's actually not an ability that you develop very well until you're all the way at stage yellow, which is why it's so challenging to, to address these issues at the lower stages. So anyways, here's the list of blue values. Absolute truth and ideology. These things are important to stage blue people. They believe in an absolute truth. It's unquestionable. They have complete faith in this, blind faith. And for them, the word ideology is not a dirty word. That's their whole life is, is grounded within ideology. That's a good thing because they believe their ideology is right. There's no doubt that their ideology could be mistaken. There's no room for other ideologies. There is only one ideology, my ideology, and it's the correct ideology. How else could it be? Belief, faith, and certainty are another set of values. There's a sense of clear right and wrong for stage blue. Stage blue values hard work, discipline, and duty. They also value law and order. Those are some key words for you. They value justice. Because justice goes hand in hand with the enforcement of the rules of, of my civilization. And see, stage blue is not about civilization in the abstract. They don't just want to civilize the whole world. They want their civilization. My civilization is the only right civilization. And if you disobey my civilization, you deserve punishment. You're a sinner. They value hierarchy, social order, and the status quo. There's no need to innovate or to be progressive. This is a dirty word for someone who's at stage blue. The status quo, our traditions, the way it's been for, for hundreds of years, the way our ancestors did it, that's the way we got to do it, and that's the way our children got to do it. Why reinvent the wheel when it already works so well? That's how they think. Stage blue values patriarchy. Women are there to serve men. Men are the enforcers. They do all the work. And women get the benefits of that, and they raise the children. And women are never allowed to be priests or rabbis. They're never really given any power. They're not on the same footing as men. And that's not a problem. That's not bad. That is the hierarchy. That's what keeps our civilization running. If we take this away, our entire civilization is going to collapse. That's how Stage Blue thinks. Meaning and greater purpose are values for stage blue. Blue's greater purpose is not selfish. It's not to advance himself and to earn millions of dollars. It's to be a good citizen. It's to follow the rules. It's to be a good Christian or a good Muslim or a good Hindu. It's to raise his family or it's to be a good wife. And ultimately, it's to serve the Lord. Serve God. That's what it's all about. That's the purpose of civilization. That's the purpose of individual lives. Morality is huge for stage blue. These are the moralists. They have a strong sense of morality, a strong sense of right and wrong, and... If anyone breaks this morality, they deserve justice because they're a sinner. And of course, my morality is the only right morality. Morality is not some relativistic cultural norm. Morality is absolute. God laid down the Ten Commandments, or uh, Allah and Muhammad laid down the rules, and we got to follow those rules to the T. And the better I can follow those rules, the better citizen I am, the better human I am, uh, the better my rewards will be in the afterlife. Stage blue values very highly culture, tradition, and heritage. These are sacred to them. So they are very sensitive to being um, 
attacked on cultural grounds. They don't want culture to change. Culture is good. In fact, we need to defend our culture, preserve our heritage against the heretics. Stage Blue values crusading for a righteous cause. Stage Blue values serving God. Stage Blue values theology and doctrine, orthodoxy, dogma and conformity. These are not bad words. These are all good. Because when you believe in, in, in absolute truth and you think you have the absolute truth and that the absolute truth has been written down in a book because that's what Stage Blue believes. It's been written down in a book. Then uh, conforming to the absolute truth is, is the best way to live your life. Why would you deviate? Any deviations from the absolute truth as written down in scriptures is, uh, is corruption and uh, failure. Stage Blue values family very highly. These are the people on TV you see who talk about family values. They also value obedience and reverence. Respect for your elders. They value God and country. Patriotism. These are the red-blooded patriots. Our country is the best country. And there's no question about that. It's always been the best. It will always be the best. And that's why we got to defend it, because it's the best. They value also righteous living. You live your life according to principles. You have a strong moral code of conduct. You have a sense of honor. And you don't want your honor besmirched. Your reputation is important to you. Your reputation within your community. Such people value good manners, decency and etiquette, proper dress, maybe uniforms, or maybe certain hairstyles, hair regulations. They find profanity offensive and uh, they're sensitive to blasphemy. Don't speak down to authority. Don't speak down to God. He is your authority. You need to submit to him. Blue values prayer. You pray to God for the things that you need. Blue has a pride in one civilization. That's what makes him a patriot. Blue values canonical texts like the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Gita, the Constitution, the Upanishads, the Vedas. These are the founding documents of that culture and that civilization. And Blue believes that you can write down the absolute truth in a book. You can memorize it as a prayer, or you can memorize it as an oath. Pledges and allegiances are important to Blue. Ritual and ceremony are important to Blue. Blue is very eager to obey authority. So, whether it's the Pope, or Muhammad, or Allah, or the Christian God, or Christ, or the Buddha, or Confucius, or the Emperor, there is some authority figure who has divine rule, or like the pharaohs, for example, would be, uh, would be perfect examples. The authority oftentimes isn't merely just an authority. He has divine status. He's a divine monarch. And he's treated like God because God bestowed him with powers to run this civilization. Blue values the afterlife, heaven, hell, and salvation. These things are very real to Blue. These aren't just ideas. These aren't just myths. This is their reality. This life is really just serving your afterlife. Blue also values strict church attendance every Sunday or whichever day of the week, values uh, ceremony and ritual, values sobriety, chastity, anal self-control, and the restraint of passion. You see, because what gets in the way of, of, of this well-functioning, well-oiled civilization machine that Blue is constructing? It's the passions and the emotions. It's letting your ego become wild. 
It's letting sex run free. None of this stuff is allowed. So we have to practice uh, very stern self-control. Even though we have these, these emotions and passions within us, we have to suppress them. We have to suppress our sexual urges. Blue values charity, giving back to his community. Blue values loyalty. And he hates traitors. Because a traitor is someone who is betraying the absolute truth and the building of this grand civilization. Blue values borders. Borders with their neighbors. And blue values building moral fiber and character. Character is important. Integrity is important to blue. So when does blue emerge? Blue emerges from red, like I said. It emerges from red when the limitations of red become too obvious. What are the limitations of red? Red is very egocentric, selfish, and impulsive, and it lacks discipline and it lacks hierarchy and structure. So of course, there's only so much of a civilization or society you can build with this sort of impulsive, lack of disciplined approach. It doesn't work at a large scale with tens of thousands of people. So then blue comes in and reacts against that and says, okay, we got to now get really disciplined. We got to control our passions. We can't just be selfish. We have to sacrifice for our civilization. And so structure, structures are put in place to, to enforce this discipline. Rules and laws are laid down. Also in red, you have abuses of personal power, which need to be put in check in order for a civilization to run. You can't just have a bloodthirsty dictator running a big civilization. It actually doesn't work. So your leaders, even though they can be monarchs, they can't just be complete ruthless thugs. They can't just be a Caligula type of person um, because uh, you need discipline. And so what Blue values is not just a monarchical leader, but it's sort of like the epitome of a, of a good monarch in Blue's eyes would be someone who has perfect self-control, perfect restraint and control over his passions, who's like very anal, very retentive uh, type of person, um, not, not overly given into his cravings and, and, and lust for sex and for food and all this, but someone who's just like very straight-laced, like you would imagine the perfect uh, bureaucrat. That would be their ultimate ideal for who should run the civilization. Also, blue emerges because with red, <clears throat> red is so selfish that it has no higher purpose. <clears throat> red doesn't submit to any god, but blue now develops a belief in a monotheistic god, usually, <clears throat> and from that is derived all the higher meaning and purpose of life. Also, the limitations of red become very obvious with war and violence. So with red comes chaos, comes warlords, lawlessness, and just um, thievery, rape and pillage. So blue is not about any of that. Blue is, is reacting against that with all this discipline and all this hierarchy. He wants civilization. So that's when blue emerges. Now, the, the thing with blue is that if you are born into a strongly blue civilization, then you are not going to notice blue emerging. You're going to be just indoctrinated into blue because blue is all about the one absolute right truth and doctrine and scripture. So you're just going to be indoctrinated into blue values from birth so much that it's going to be a complete brainwashing. You're not going to know that you're within blue. You're not going to know or feel that you've been indoctrinated. It's just going to be the truth. This is going to be your reality, and most likely it will be until you die. That's if you're in a very strongly blue civilization. Now, of course, there's degrees of blueness. It starts off with how you might imagine 
maybe medieval Europe was a thousand years ago, you know, very, very strongly blue. But then the blue, it starts to grow more and more into orange and orange is more individualistic. It's more materialistic. So you're going to have gradations of it where at first you're really indoctrinated into blue, but then the indoctrination, you start to see the limits of indoctrination starts to crumble and, and dissolve a little bit. And then once you get into orange, there's not so much of a strong indoctrination, although orange has its own version of indoctrination. But um, so it kind of depends what society you're in. Certain societies are very strongly blue. Other societies are sort of half blue, half orange. Other societies are all orange, very little blue. So it's going to depend. But if you're in a strongly blue society, uh, watch out for that indoctrination. It's going to get you. All right, let's talk about now some of the characteristics of blue. For blue, life has meaning, direction, and purpose with predetermined outcomes. If you do these things, you will get these results. And if you do these other things, you will get these other results. Blue is always searching for order, security, and stability. Blue is organizing, managing, trying to be concrete and develop structures. Blue is dedicated, responsible, and meticulous. Attention to detail. The perfect bureaucrat. Blue is trustworthy, predictable, and loyal. He is engaged in righteous, stable living. Obedience is enforced through a sense of duty and guilt. Guilt is very big for blue. Impulsivity is controlled through guilt. So why do you not have sex? Because you're going to feel guilty afterwards, because you know that you've sinned. Why you're not going to go out and party? Because again, that goes against the scriptures, the strict scriptures of the Lord. And then you're going to feel guilty because you think you're a sinner, because you've been programmed with this condition, with this, um, with this belief that if you don't obey the rules, then you're a sinner and you're evil and you're bad. Blue is engaged in purging of impure thoughts because, of course, blue has lots of impure thoughts. He's tempted by the devil, but he knows that the devil must be resisted. To blue, the devil is not a metaphorical symbol. To blue, the devil is real. The devil is tempting him to stray from the path of God. And so Blue tries really hard to resist the devil. And that's usually all his emotions and passions and temptations. That's why he's so anal and uh, strict and disciplinarian. The Blue is all about surrendering worldly pleasures for a higher calling, for the afterlife. To blue, everybody has their proper place in civilization. There's often caste systems within blue societies, and you do not question the caste system. The caste system is not a problem. The caste system is good. That is the hierarchy, and we are here to defend the hierarchy. We're not here to reinvent the hierarchy and make life better for other people. That's not what blue cares about. To blue, the hierarchy has been handed down by God. It's our traditions and our heritage. So we don't question any of that. To blue, the existing order is good, so it must be reinforced. To blue, uh, codes of conduct are based on an eternal order within the cosmos. The entire cosmos revolves around man, and not just man, but my race and my civilization. God has designed the entire universe for my civilization to be at the top, to rule everybody, including all the animals, all the lesser races, all the minorities, all the women and all the children. This is patriarchy, patriarchal rule. Blue never questions authority, elders, or teachers because they are carriers of the truth. Blue loves laws, regulations, and discipline building character.
Blue enforces laws and order because otherwise we will get chaos and anarchy. Blue is reacting against chaos and anarchy. Blue sees himself as bringing order to the chaos. So Blue sees himself as civilizing the heathens, the pagans, the barbarians, and the savages. Those are not at the same level as he is. They're all below him. Blue is the rise of civilization, the rise of cities, the rise of empires, the rise of laws of, uh, of codes of law, and of monotheism. For Blue, reality is strictly objective. Blue has high rigidity, low open-mindedness, and high dogma. Right and wrong are absolute. They are not social constructs. Cultural traditions and values are also absolutes. They are not social constructs. They are not arbitrary for Blue. Blue sees the world very much in black and white. It's clear what's right. It's clear what's wrong. It's clear what's good. It's clear what's evil. And Blue has a very strong sense of objective good and evil. And he will call out the evildoers and the sinners. For Blue, knowledge is set down in enduring form on stone tablets and scriptures, which are revered and uh, placed into temples and preserved for hundreds of years, and they are worshipped. Blue takes a very strict and literal approach to the interpretation of religious text. Blue almost always has a holy book or holy scripture, like the Bible, the Torah, the Quran, the Vedas, the Gita, and there is only one interpretation, the literal interpretation. So if the Bible says that you need to stone homosexuals, that's exactly what they deserve, because that's the word of God. And if the Bible says that the earth is 5,000 years old, that's precisely how old it is, because that's the most literal interpretation. There are no fuzzy interpretations. There are no multiple interpretations. You don't have one scholar saying this and another scholar. No, it's just black and white. There's no room for variance in interpretation. There's no metaphors. It literally happened. Jesus was literally born to a virgin. That's not a metaphor. That literally happened. Blue defends doctrine against heresy and corruption because Blue thinks that his Bible or his worldview is the absolute. That means any deviation from that is going to be a corrupt influence of the devil. And so, of course, the enemy of Blue is the devil, so he's always fighting against the devil. And, of course, that means he has to look out for heretics. The heretics are those who try to make clever interpretations of the Bible. Non-literal interpretations. Blue is really just a congregation of believers. That's what the civilization or society is about. Blue invokes almost always an anthropomorphic father figure God. God is not pantheistic. God is not disembodied. God is a bearded man in the clouds, just like it's depicted in our books, just like it's depicted in the Sistine Chapel, in our temples. God is a human. Because I'm human. So, of course, I am made in the image of God. Blue believes that there is a higher power and that this higher power wants us to win. God is interested in the survival of my team, of my culture, and my civilization. God is on my side. God is blessing my war. My holy war has been blessed by God. And ultimate judgment awaits to those who do not obey God. Rewards will come to the faithful, and justice will come to the wicked. The rewards will be sweet and heavenly, and 
the punishments to the wicked will be hellish. So we have the notions of heaven and hell. And heaven and hell, of course, to blue, they're not metaphors. They're not stories and myths. They're not parables to teach you morals. They are literally there. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And if you go to hell, you're going to be stuck with pitchforks for eternity. That's literally going to happen in Blue's opinion. Blue is sacrificing himself for his civilization and for God. Blue believes that evil must be stamped out because ultimately God is in a battle against the devil. That's the higher game being played here. Blue is careful not to be a sinner, and Blue is extremely judgmental of sinners. Very, very judgmental. Sinners must be punished. They must be called out as evildoers. And they must be exterminated without compassion because they are devils. They are servants of the devil, literally. Blue is all about the rightful exercise of just authority. And how do you know that authority is just? Because that's whoever is the leader of our civilization, and ultimately he's a servant of God. So the reason you know that your authority is just, and the reason why your war is holy, is because ultimately it's all happening in the name of God. So the Crusades, for example, are good, and we need to crusade for goodness all around the world. And of course, we need to spread the word of God and the might of our civilization all around the world. We need to civilize all those barbarians and heathens who haven't awoken to the one true faith. Blue rejects multiculturalism. There's no such notion as like, oh, that culture is, is just as good as my culture. No, my culture is obviously the best culture. Other cultures and peoples are inferior. They're not just different, they're inferior. They're lower on God's ultimate hierarchy. And whatever gods those other people believe in, those are false gods. That's idol worship. And so we need to destroy their holy books. We need to destroy all their statues and images of all their false gods because obviously that's devil worship in Blue's eyes. In Blue's eyes, foreigners, animals, and plants, and Mother Nature largely exist to serve Blue, to serve mankind, to serve this one true civilization so they can all be exploited. Blue fears excommunication because his whole sense of purpose and meaning is being part of this community. So if he's kicked out of this community, if he's excommunicated from his church, that's going to be like a, a life and death uh, situation for, for Blue. Blue believes in rules, rights, and duties. To him, these are very significant. And Blue is all about building empires and kingdoms. That's what this whole set of values and characteristics is ultimately kind of geared towards. <coughs> all right, so let's get to some examples of Blue. I got a lot of examples. I'm going to run through them really quickly here. And of course, with some of these examples, I'm overgeneralizing. You have to understand that I'm sort of taking Blue and I'm distilling it down to its essence. So not always will blue be 100% blue cranked up, you know, to the maximum. It could be 50% blue, 75% blue, you know. Blue can have different intensities. You can have a very deep, dark color blue, or you can have a kind of a light, pale blue. And that, of course, depends kind of where, where you and your civilization, your culture are in their evolutionary arc. So here's some examples of blue. The Middle East today. Although there's also a lot of orange in the Middle East these days, but uh, still many elements of the Middle East, many countries or many segments of those countries are still heavily, heavily blue. They're very kind of traditional. Palestinians, Zionists, Saudi Arabia is a good example of blue. Although also in Saudi Arabia, you see some 
some emergence of, of orange, uh, sort of a business culture. And it's interesting to see how the blue and the orange are kind of like, it's in a transition phase. You can actually see Saudi Arabia going through this transition where it was very strongly blue, let's say 50 or 100 years ago, and now it's becoming more and more orange. And some of the reforms that are happening now in Saudi Arabia, like this year, they're allowing women for the first time ever in their history to actually get driver licenses and drive cars. So that's blue evolve, starting to evolve into orange, although there's still many segments within Saudi Arabia who believe that now, of course, this is a corruption. See, the way they see that, they say, oh, women are driving. No, that's the work of the devil. You're disturbing our status quo. So, of course, they are going to uh, fight against that because they see it as a corruption. Medieval Europe is a really good uh, prototypical example of blue. Elements within Iran... Pakistan, the Indian caste system, Puritanism, Confucian China, Islamic fundamentalism, Wahhabism, Hasidic Judaism, the Salvation Army, patriotism, standing up for the national anthem. What is that brouhaha all about? That's pure blue. Blue wants to defend the national anthem. Zen monasteries are very heavily blue. Catholic Church, evangelicals, the religious right wing in America, conservatives, Republicans tend to skew heavily blue, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, Sharia law, banning birth control, banning abortion, banning flag burning. These are all blue style moves. Building border walls, that's a blue move. Anti-immigration, Witch trials, crusades. Roy Moore is a really good example of someone who's stuck in in stage blue. He uh, he actually got he was a judge. He got kicked out um, of his judgeship because he wanted to post the Ten Commandments on um, on the wall in the courthouse or in his office. I forget exactly where. So uh, if you notice what was happening with the uh, Roy Moore brouhaha. Um, Earlier this year, or last year it was, um, you see that, that that's a battle with stage, stage blue right there. The alt-right skews heavily blue. Neo-Nazis, white supremacists, KKK. What is this? This is heavily stage blue. Noah's Ark, when, led, when read literally, that's stage blue. The Ten Commandments is stage blue. Uniforms, Catholic nuns, the Amish, the Shakers the Bible Belt in America, the moral majority, Newt Gingrich, Bill O'Reilly, Billy Graham, the Reverend Jerry Falwell, James Dobson, Pat Robertson, George W. Bush, Mike Pence. Oh, Mike Pence is a really good example of stage blue. You can see it even in his body posture, the way he holds himself, this sort of anal retentive uh, disciplinarian manner in which he carries himself uh, just uh, prototypical stage blue. Gay conversion therapy. That's a stage blue initiative. Kamikaze pilots. The samurai code. Harakiri. Cutting your stomach open. Out of honor. The way the Japanese samurai did. The marathon monks of Mount Hiei, which I talked about. They're very big into discipline. Hindu religion, Hindu family, the Islamic family, it's very blue. Mormons tend to skew very blue. Creationism, of course, is a, is a, a blue creation. The war on Christmas that the conservatives are always railing about, that's a blue thing. Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, Alex Jones, Bill O'Reilly, these sort of talk show conservative speakers who are always ranting about the degradation of culture and the, the corruption of the moral fabric of America, this sort of stuff. This is pure blue. Fox News is pure blue. Second Amendment, mandatory military service, codes of honor, virginity pledges, nationalism, Victorian England, military families, oftentimes police officers and firefighters and blue collar workers, tend to skew heavily blue. 
they tend to be very kind of traditionalist and they have a strong sense of, of justice and authority. Nazi managers and generals were very blue. Have you watched the movie Starship Troopers? The ethos behind Starship Troopers is very blue. Religious terrorism happens when blue goes to its most extreme excesses. The Spanish Inquisition is blue, imperialism, missionaries, Spanish conquistadors, Magellan, the Hare Krishnas. When a soldier jumps on a grenade, that's a very blue move. Take one for the team. Theocracy is blue. Prayer in school, communist China, the colonial South, imperial Japan, patriarchy, culture warriors, TV evangelicals, Bible school, colonial duels, like in the South when people used to duel each other out of a sense of honor, Maoist China, 20th century Marxism, holy war, battles over holy ground, like you see happening in, in Israel. Grand cathedrals and temples and mosques, these are creations of blue. Protecting the children from sexual corruption or moral corruption. Preventing children, for example, from wearing makeup. That's a blue move. Killing apostates is a blue move. Imprisoning homosexual, unequal women's rights. Prayer in school. The sanctity of marriage. The Japanese tea ceremony. These are all examples of blue. Here are some statistics about blue which are interesting. About 40% of the adult global population is blue. And about 30% of the total influence, cultural and social influence in the world is dominated by blue. So it's a pretty large chunk of the world population still. If you live in a Western democracy like in Europe or in America and you're relatively well educated, then you have a tendency of underestimating how blue the world is. You might even have a tendency of underestimating how blue your country is. Like if you live in New York or in California, uh, then you have a hard time understanding just how blue middle America is, rural America. And of course, don't confuse this with the color blue for Democrats now. Um, but this is what you see when you look at the political map. You see that the, the east and west coast of the United States is, uh, is heavily Democratic, and in the middle of the country is pretty much all Republican and conservative. And then the east and west coast can't fathom why is the middle of the country so backwards. It's not per se that they're backwards. It's just that you haven't really fathomed how much of the world is still at this stage of evolution in their consciousness and in their psyche where they are deeply blue. The style of government that comes with blue thinking is authority structures, order-driven mm, hierarchies, theocracies, and empires. What triggers blue? What pushes blue's buttons? Well, this is very easy. It's very easy to trigger blue. In fact, it's pretty much easy to trigger almost every single stage if you know what their trigger points are, which I will tell you right now. But we have to be careful. Promise not to abuse this. These trigger points I'm telling you so that you can become conscious of how you yourself become triggered, not so that you can weaponize these and go attack blue people, attacking their weaknesses. All right, so watch out for that. In a, in a nutshell, what triggers blue is stage red, stage orange, stage green, and stage yellow. It's basically all the surrounding stages that are not blue, which are triggering blue. And you'll have a better sense of that once you watch my future episodes about the other stages. Relativism and not knowing, uncertainty, really triggers blue. Atheism, secularism, and skepticism, 
really triggers blue because it goes against the heart, the heart of their whole philosophy, which is uh, absolute truth, calls that into question, calls all their ideologies into question. For Blue, this is deeply disturbing and unsettling. It's threatening to them. It's an existential threat to them. You're not just playing with ideas, you're playing with their whole sense of reality, which is why they will resist you oftentimes to the death. Also, they are triggered by intellectuals, academic elites, and postmodernism. You want a really triggered blue? Start talking to him about Jacques Derrida. You're going to drive him up the fucking wall. Uh, uh, blue is triggered by Obama. Barack Obama. Why did the Republicans and conservatives so dislike Obama? Why did the Christian evangelicals so dislike Obama? Because Obama, in their mind, represents this sort of intellectual, overly academic, overly strategic, sort of uh, philosophical, relativistic, complex thinking, kind of like worldly individual who actually is multicultural, cares about different cultures, cares about considering values of, of different societies. Like, no, for Blue, this is, this is treason. Obama is a traitor to them. That's why they don't like him fundamentally. It doesn't matter what Obama does. It's the fact that what he represents is he represents this sort of grayscale, complex thinking and diplomacy around the world, which is anathema to blue. Blue's thinking is black and white thinking. It's patriotism. And Obama wasn't a blind patriot. Obama was deferential to different cultures and different needs of different nations. And so he's a, he's sort of a complex strategic negotiator. This does not fly in blue. That makes him seem soft. It makes him seem like a socialist. It makes him seem like a, like a European because really Obama was sort of in the green stage. And so blue is reacting really heavily against green. And that's generally what's happening within American culture and politics right now is you see a clash between blue and green and between orange and green. And people are really resisting green. And of course, they're going to resist the idea that they're resisting green because what I'm saying here makes it sound as though Obama is above. Green is above blue. And it's true. It is above. But you have to be careful not to think of it as like better than it's not better than, it's just evolution. You know, it's not like um, the dinosaurs were worse than today's birds. Evolution is not about being better or worse than previous species. It's about how well do you fit into your environment and your environment's always changing. And also, it's, um, you can't judge it too much because the way evolution works is that you have to go through the intermediary steps to get to the next level steps. You can't just skip around. So you can't really blame blue for being blue and you can't blame green for being green because they have to be that way because that's how life unfolds. What else triggers blue? Space cadets, philosophers, and free thinkers. Hippies, free sex, drugs, rock and roll, rap music, materialism, hedonism, and unabashed sinning. So those people who just kind of go around and, you know, they, they're gluttons, they just indulge themselves with sex and food and, and money and wealth, this, this is going to trigger Blue because Blue wants to sacrifice that for the greater civilization. That's Blue reacting against Orange. Moral corruption triggers blue. Change to the traditional status quo triggers blue. Changing things just for the sake of changing things. Progressivism. This triggers blue. Lawlessness, chaos, disorder, and anarchy triggers blue. When people are breaking the rules, that triggers blue. When justice is not served, 
to the sinners. When sinners get away with their sins, that really triggers blue. Lack of hierarchy triggers blue. Terrorism triggers blue because terrorism represents sort of the pinnacle of chaos and disorder and anarchy and um, the devil because terrorism really stems kind of from from uh, from either very low blue or kind of a high orange or not, not high orange but a high red a high red stage multiculturalism and globalism trigger blue excessive selfishness and egotism people who are not willing to sacrifice for the team or for one civilization that triggers blue disrespect for the status quo like disrespecting the flag breaking agreements and disloyalty to their civilization that's huge blue is very sensitive to traitors and a traitor is basically anyone who betrays the culture that blue was indoctrinated into blue is triggered by questioning of existing orthodoxy so when someone opens a bible and starts to say oh let, let's let's think about how we could reinterpret the, the bible in different ways for modern times that totally triggers blue because to blue there's no such thing as reinterpreting the bible for modern times blue doesn't really believe in evolution for blue reality is static the truth is static it's clear it's black and white so you don't question orthodoxy you just follow it with discipline and for the same reason blue is triggered by people who question classic social roles so when stage green starts to question gender roles racial roles uh the roles of females in the household this sorts of stuff women in the workplace this is all disturbing the apple cart changing the status quo trying to change the culture and blue perceive this as an existential threat he sees this as corruption of the culture not a progress not evolution but corruption blue is triggered by heresy sacrilege and blasphemy so sometimes you will see people under my videos saying leo i, I love your videos i love the stuff you talk about but uh i wish you wouldn't say fuck so much and they get sort of offended by that so that's sort of a blue a blue sensitivity uh, because blue wants to keep this sort of appearance of of order and propriety and kind of like honor and decency of course what actually goes on behind the ski the the scenes in blue's closet well that's often a different story blue is triggered by science encroaching on religion for blue science is it's okay it's tolerated but only so long as it doesn't encroach upon religious territory when science starts to find contradictions in the bible or when science starts to dictate public policy and when science is taught in school but prayer is not allowed in school this really upsets blue because in blue's mind religion is the most important thing because it's 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 the closest thing to god the highest authority figure and so science is kind of getting in the way of that and so blue is very sensitive to this sort of secularization of society which is happening in america and all over the world these days let's talk about some of the unhealthy manifestations and excesses of blue so even though i said that blue is not good or bad nor is any other stage what you have to understand is that all of these stages can be taken to their extremes and can become unhealthy and toxic and dysfunctional because life is all about finding the right balance and harmony and so when you go too much into this direction of blue it can become very dangerous and very toxic as uh, as i'll mention here in a minute uh but also you have to understand that just because blue has all of these toxic elements does not automatically mean that blue people are somehow automatically violent or evil 
most people who are deeply blue are decent, hardworking, loyal, kind individuals most of the time. But when it gets excessive and you get a sort of mob mentality and you have an entire civilization of blue and it sort of creates this echo chamber, then you can have all sorts of nasty, um, dangerous excesses. So what are some of those? Well, ideology and radical fundamentalism. This is a hallmark of blue when it goes to its excess. Blue becomes so sure and so right, so certain of his rightness, that he's willing to kill and wage a holy war to do that. See, Because when you really believe that your God is the one true right God, and that you know his mind, you can read his mind and you know his divine plans, and that you are now an executor for his divine plans, and you are literally fighting the devil, well, this gives you the perfect system of justifications to commit all sorts of cruelty and evil, while at the same time deceiving yourself. Blue tends to be very closed-minded, rigid, stubborn, and unwilling to evolve. Even when that evolution is necessary for blue to survive, blue will often resist evolving. He will be hard and strict and inflexible. Oftentimes, blue will be unloving, especially to those people who are not within his in circle, who are not part of his tribe. Blue, taken to its success, traps the mind in rigid, intolerant belief systems. Belief is confused with the truth. Blue people tend to be inside the box thinkers, so they get stuck within a paradigm and they cannot see the world from any other perspective. This becomes very limiting, becomes very difficult to grow. Blue is very prone to mob mentality, lynch mobs, mobs with pitchforks, Blue is unable to think about metaphysics, which tends to be very limiting, especially when it comes to spirituality. Blue cannot really experience true spirituality because blue is so wrapped up in these rigid belief systems. True spirituality is letting go of all your beliefs, and blue can't fathom that because blue has been indoctrinated, usually very strongly from birth to a point where it's, it's uh, beyond cure. Blue is prone to idol worship. Blue often worships the map rather than the territory, worships the statue, worships the art in the cathedral, worships the image of Jesus rather than the more abstract values that Jesus taught for example. Blue is almost constantly under the pressure of guilt because blue is constantly failing to live up to um, his religious high principles and ideals because the only way you can actually be truly religious and live up to those ideals like the Buddha or Jesus or Muhammad, the only way you can do that is actually by shedding your ego and getting rid of all your beliefs. But blue is not going to do that. Blue is trying to get to Buddha level through self-discipline and following rules and beliefs and scriptures, and this is absolutely never going to work. So what Blue has to do, Blue has to repress the fact that it's not working, and he has to guilt himself, and he has to always be walking around and telling himself how he's a sinner, and, you know, why am I so weak? Why can't I be a better human being? Well, the reason you can't be a better human being is because you have this massive, massive ego with this very rigid ideology, which of course you're going to do a lot of selfish stuff. You can't just overcome selfishness through lofty ideals and principles. That's oftentimes why blue comes off as very hypocritical to the other stages like orange or to green, because even though blue professes to be this holy religious person, who is above sex and above emotions and above corruption and all of this, 
But in fact, blue hasn't actually worked through all of that psychological baggage. It's, it's, it's actually been suppressed and buried very deeply in there. And so blue behind the scenes oftentimes engages in all sorts of sexual activity, homosexual activity. Of course, all of this is denied and repressed and, and hidden. It's part of blue's shadow. Um, and blue is often corrupt and susceptible to gluttony and to all, all the temptations. And that, that's why you have these preachers, these evangelical preachers who can go up there and preach a good thing, but then uh, behind closed doors, they're having sex with, uh, with men and all sorts of stuff like they're having sex with children, you know, all sorts of stuff like that happens. That's right, because you're not actually doing real spiritual work. You're just indoctrinating yourself with belief systems and you cannot substitute belief systems for real spiritual purification. What needs to happen is that you actually need to start to admit that all of your belief systems and your religious systems, that they're, they're not doing the job. But that is exactly what Blue does not want to admit. Um, another excess of Blue is low tolerance for outsiders and for foreigners. This leads to xenophobia. Blue tends to be very judgmental and very moralizing. Blue is always looking out for who's a sinner, blaming and demonizing sinners. But then, of course, as you're judging everybody else, you also judge yourself very harshly as well. And so Blue is, again, in this constant state of guilt, blaming himself for all the sin that he's done. And therefore, he lives a pretty miserable life below the surface. Blue is prone to demonization. Because Blue really believes in a true good and evil, as being objective. He actually believes that certain people are demons. Nazis are demons. Islamic radicals are demons, devils. Certain countries like the axis of evil of George W. Bush, North Korea, Iran, Iraq, these are the evildoers. This, they serve Satan. That's what they actually believe. So there's, there's this tendency to demonize other people and to not be open to seeing the world from their perspective. Because that would open the floodgates for relativism. And as soon as you open the floodgates for relativism, that's like opening Pandora's box. And now all of a sudden, all of Blue's beliefs, they all are threatened. And that becomes very scary for Blue. Blue loves to assign blame. Blue loves crusading. Holy wars, and these holy wars can become very violent and dangerous. Blue becomes easily self-righteous. Uh, blue can become a martyr, and other people can rally around these martyrs. That starts a whole movement, starts a new holy war, lots of violence, all in the name of the martyr. Classic stage blue type of behavior. Blue can easily justify cruelty with scripture. Blue will use the scriptures unwittingly, unconsciously, to actually justify his egoic fears and insecurities. And just basically, he turns the scriptures into a system of justifications for his ego, which can become very dangerous. Battles of the civilizations, like East versus the Middle East, or I mean West versus the Middle East, or West versus East, these sorts of conflicts, these civilization-wide conflicts, or white Europeans versus the Native American savages. These sorts of conflicts uh, often come from stage blue. You have a clash of civilizations. When blue becomes very excessive, it becomes close to progress and to new technology. All throughout human history, you see how blue civilization has resisted certain technological developments, whether it was the printing press, or whether it was um, mm, innovations within science, new scientific theories, or invention of birth control, condoms, cloning, genetic modifications. So there's all, all sorts of stuff. Um, media, technology is, is like uh, radio, television. This stuff was all resisted before Blue finally came to accept it. In its excess, Blue denies science 
and blue denies reason. In its excess, blue can do a lot of puritanical censorship, like censoring television, radio, against bad words, against nudity, this sorts of stuff, because blue is not comfortable with that. That's seen as a corrupting influence. Blue can be unable to let loose and have fun because blue is so anal. Blue is often sexually repressed. Blue is conflicted, very conflicted about sexuality because his religion tells him that sexuality is evil. It's a corrupting influence. And at the same time, blue has these strong, just animal urges. And so how does he reconcile those two? That's very difficult. Usually it's, it's all hidden under the rug. And so it's done behind closed doors with skeletons in your closet with a lot of um, justification and guilt. Blue will often prohibit sexual education and birth control because sexuality needs to be controlled and repressed. Blue is, that's why blue is against uh, marriage before sex. That's why blue values virginity so highly. In its excess, blue often lacks empathy for other civilizations and peoples. It fails to see the commonality that all humans face. Blue has a lack of intellectual curiosity about the world. Very often. Blue, of course, is closed off to mysticism and non-duality. Even though mysticism and non-duality is the core of Blue's religion, what Blue doesn't understand is that his religion and his Messiah, like the Buddha or Christ or Mohammed, that they were full-blown non-dual mystics. They were not blue. They were way more evolved than blue. But of course, blue doesn't understand this because blue takes spirituality literally. And so the deep irony is that even though blue is very religious on the surface, it's only the surface. Deep down, blue is not really religious or spiritual at all. It's just the opposite. What blue engages in is a sort of material spirituality, not true spirituality. Because blue sees everything within the spiritual world as physical. Heaven and hell, these are real physical places. God is a real physical human being living up in the clouds. The devil is a, is a real creature with, with horns and a, and a pointy tail and a pitchfork, literally. These are not metaphors to blue. And so therefore, blue is closed off to enlightenment. And if blue ever does become enlightened through accident, for example, some monks do it that way, uh, they pray so much they accidentally become enlightened. But then they're terrified of it because what they discover is that enlightenment means that everything is completely relative. It's all a hallucination and it's it's infinite and it's nothing. Reality is nothing that there, there really is no God. God has no form and no substance. And that completely terrifies the stage blue um, mystic or believer because everything he's been taught was the opposite of that. So that's uh, because Blue is closed off to mysticism and non-duality, he's going to burn witches. He's going to be fearful of anything supernatural. He's going to suppress all of that. Because for Blue, religion is about belief. It's not about having mystical experiences. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. You have evangelicals, for example, who will undergo... Uh, certain religious experiences or mystical experiences, but then usually what they do is they, they, they reinterpret those experiences to support their old ideologies, which is the wrong way to go about it. Uh, blue taken to its excess is anti-multicultural, which tends to be a problem, anti-globalist, which tends to be a problem because our world is becoming more multicultural, it's becoming more of a mixing pot, more interconnected with the internet and with airplane travel and all of this. It's becoming more global economically, and you're not going to stop any of that. You're not going to stop evolution from happening. You're not going to stop progress from happening. So because blue is so rigid, it tends to stick its heels into the, into the mud and uh, it has to be dragged forward by progress and evolution, which can be frustrating to the other stages and other people who have to do that. 
Blue can have a lot of repressed anger. Uh, blue tends to be homophobic, racist, and misogynistic. Blue, taken to its excess, can be oppressive to minorities, sometimes viciously so. Blue reads sacred texts way too literally, so he doesn't really understand true mysticism and spirituality. Blue is prone to black and white thinking, which tends to not work so well in a complex grayscale world. Blue is prone to us versus them thinking, dividing people into these rigid in-groups and out-groups. Blue tends to not have enough understanding and compassion for the weaknesses and frailties of other people, which is why, for example, in blue societies and cultures, there's not really good support systems for drug addiction, for sex addiction, porn addiction, um, this sorts of stuff, because blue sees that as sin. And so you don't support sin. You don't help people who are sinners. What you do is that you, you blame them and you, uh, maybe you put them in jail, maybe you punish them, but you don't, you don't have compassion for sinners. Uh, in excess, blue often is very strict with children, the way children are raised. And children are never really allowed to be children because all these perfectionistic standards are placed upon children to be good and not to be sinful. And then the children grow up also uh, becoming anal retentive, just like their parents were, and they never feel like they're good enough. And so they're constantly living with guilt and with shame for disapp disappointing their parents. And then, of course, they teach that to their own children. Blue, in its excess, is unable to see the commonality between all cultures and between all religions. Blue thinks that each religion is really different, when in fact they're all basically talking about exactly the same thing, just with different window dressing. Blue can be excessively bureaucratic. Blue can be excessively theocratic, where the government starts to dictate what you should believe. Blue does not believe in separation of church and state because that's a betrayal of the absolute truth, a betrayal of God. God, the state, is supposed to be serving God. See, that leads to theocracy. Blue is prone to authoritarianism in its excesses. Nationalism and communism. And this is something that a lot of people misunderstand, and this is why this model can be so helpful, Spiral Dynamics is because people think that, oh, but nationalism and patriotism is the opposite of communism. No, it's not. It's the same exact mentality, just different content. The structure is the same. Communism, as it was practiced in the Soviet Union and in China, not today's China, but China uh, maybe 50 or 100 years ago, uh, the, like the old school original communism, that was not stage green. These were not hippies. These were not progressives. The original communists and Marxists were not progressive at all. They were deeply blue. So the difference between ideological capitalists and communists and nationalists is much less than most people think. Keep that in mind. It's very useful to know. Um, because actually those people, for example, a lot of conservatives in America, a lot of the conservative religious right in America and the alt-right, their, their, <laughs> their, their arch enemy is communism, right? Progressivism, liberalism, and communism as they see it, socialism. But that's really a mistake because what they're not noticing is they're not noticing that it's their, their blue style of thinking, which actually leads to the kind of communism and socialism, which they cite as being the greatest evil. Because what do they do? They look back 100 years into Soviet Russia and this sort of stuff and say, oh, look, that's, that's what's really bad. We don't want America to turn like that. Right. But America is never going to turn like that because America is already evolving into orange and green. It's already way beyond that. Actually, the closest thing in America to the old, old school style communism and Marxism that these blue thinkers are 
afraid of is themselves, which of course is why they are, are so triggered by this stuff. It's not an accident. They're triggered by it because they're actually not accepting the fact that um, the religious right in America has a lot more in common with the theocracy of Iran and the, uh, the theocracy of Sharia law in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia, and also the sort of ideological Marxism that took place in the Soviet Union than it does with the soy drinking West Coast liberal uh, progressives. And also with Nazis. You know, there's a lot more in common with Nazis and with the religious right than there is with the uh, soy drinking progressives. And that's, of course, why stage blue people, when you talk to stage blue people about studying Hitler and studying Nazi Nazism and trying to learn the lessons there, they never want to go there. They never want to actually study the lessons in history from Nazism or from theocratic countries. They don't want to see these commonalities because to, to see these commonalities is to admit that you yourself and your entire worldview is very closely aligned to that. And only a few things need to change, a few circumstances. And then what you'll have is you'll have a recurrence of nationalism and uh, of Nazism very easily. So when people these days in America are sort of surprised and shocked that, oh, how could America be going alt-right? And how could America be having these sorts of authoritarian tendencies? No, it's, it's not shocking at all. It's completely understandable when you understand that a large part of America is stage blue. It's completely understandable. But you can only understand that when you really understand the spiral dynamics model very deeply. And perhaps the, the worst excesses of blue is genocide and ethnic cleansing. That's what happens when blue gets taken to its, to its pinnacle of excess. And you can see that happening all around the world in stage blue societies. Here are some slogans that epitomize the stage blue mentality. God gave us this land. This is the way God intended it to be. They will be punished in the name of Jesus. Make America great again. A revival of traditional values. Say what you do and do what you say. Just stick to the rules. Actions speak louder than words. Honesty is the best policy. Better safe than sorry. Take one for the team. And blood and soil. All of these slogans are the heart of blue thinking. And that's why when they are said, if the people who are in the audience and they are stage blue, they will completely resonate and love these slogans. And all the other stages will probably hate these slogans and see all the limitations and problems with these types of slogans. Now let's talk about how to transcend blue. Perhaps most importantly is to read very deeply about stage blue. Not just what I said here, this is a beginning point, but you need to actually read about it. Familiarize yourself with the stage you are at. As you read about yourself, that gives you self-awareness and you start to see the limitations of your own worldview. Also, read in depth about stage orange, which is the next stage that you should be moving into. It's helpful to read about your stage and also the next maybe one or two stages ahead of you, because then you can see the things that you're resisting in the stage you've got to be moving up to. The thing that's keeping you in blue, if you're stuck in blue, is that you're resisting orange and you're resisting green. See? So what's keeping, for example, a lot of the Middle East stuck in stage blue is people who are indoctrinated into these Islamic ideologies that are sort of very archaic and medieval. 
they look at the West and they look at the moral corruption and decadence of the West, all the materialism, all the all the money and the sex and 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 the the freedom that women have and all this homosexuality is normalized, all of this, and they see that as a threat to to solid blue. And so of course they are resisting moving into orange. But what they don't realize is that if they read about orange some more and also green, they would realize, oh, orange is what I should be aspiring to. Yes, there are excesses to orange, but I will pass over those and those will get corrected over time. The mistake is to retreat back into blue. Another really important thing for blue in order to transcend itself is to stop judging orange and especially green and yellow. Stop judging the hippies and the liberals and the progressives. Stop judging the intellectuals and the elites and the globalists. This is really damaging. As long as you're judging others with these sorts of labels, you're never going to be able to evolve to that level and beyond that level. Stop judging materialism and success. Stop judging sexuality. Stop judging relativism. Stop judging postmodernism. This is really holding you back. You might say, oh, Leo, but what about all the excesses of liberals and hippies and postmodernists and the excess of excesses of sexuality? What about the excesses? Yes, there are excesses at every stage. The trap is to become overly focused on the excesses to the point where you're paralyzed and now you're stuck in your stage. That's happening because of fear. Judgment is happening because of fear. You're refusing to accept reality. You're refusing to accept how human consciousness and the human psyche evolves because you want to cling to your comfort zone. And I understand that. And every stage basically does that to a certain degree. I'm just pointing out how to transcend. If you really want to grow, if you really want to self-actualize, follow what I'm saying here. Stop judging all this stuff. Stop judging mysticism. Stop judging new age spirituality. Stop judging moral depravity. Stop judging evil, sinful people. In fact, eliminate the notion of evil altogether. Eliminate the notion of the devil. That's very important for blue because blue is so stuck with moralizing. Your moralizing is killing you. Every time you moralize to somebody else, you're also moralizing to yourself. And it's slowly drowning you in guilt. And it's preventing you from being able to overcome your own inner weaknesses and demons and limitations. So long as you judge the inner demons of others, you will also be judging and being stuck with your own inner demons. Also, to transcend blue, stop clinging to tradition. Let it go. Notice that everything evolves. Notice that all traditions die. There has not been a single tradition which has survived unevolved and unchanged for the last 2,000 years. Everything has evolved. The Bible has evolved. Language has evolved. Countries have evolved. Religions have evolved. Everything has evolved. Christianity today is nothing like Christianity of 2,000 years ago. Islam of today is nothing like Islam of 1,000 years ago. Etc., etc., etc. You cannot cling to anything. There's really no security in materiality, which is something that Blue doesn't want to accept. Also, to help you transcend, become more skeptical and start thinking independently for yourself. This is very important for Blue because Blue is so stuck thinking along the, uh, the programmed lines that he's been indoctrinated with. Start to question all authority. Start to notice that authority is often wrong. Start to notice that authority is often abused. Therefore, you need to become your own authority. Start to notice the limitations of religion. Start to notice that the things that religion preaches, it itself often cannot actually embody and actualize. That should be a, a, a clue or a hint to you that the way religion is trying to do it is not going to work. There are much more effective ways of practicing spirituality than religion. 
start to notice abuses of the church, like the uh, all the sexual scandals and all the hypocrisy that, that exists within the church, all the corruption that's there. Notice that actually the devil has infiltrated the church and your holy book and your religion and your culture long, 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 long ago, such that he has perverted it and turned it inside out, such that now when you're following the religious teachings of your of your culture, actually, most often, you're just being a servant of the devil. Start to notice that. Notice that beliefs can be extremely self-deceptive, and that belief is not equivalent to truth and to reality. Reality is much larger than belief itself. You can never capture reality within a system of beliefs. Notice that all beliefs are ultimately false creations of the human mind, and they are relative, and that beliefs basically just serve the ego. They serve the devil. Start to be iconoclastic and rebellious. Start to notice the limitations of judgments and moralism. Notice that when you're judging others, you're simultaneously judging yourself and see how that's hurting you. Start to acknowledge that reality is more relative than you ever thought. That this notion of absolute truth, maybe it doesn't exist at all. Start to acknowledge that. Start to acknowledge that good and evil do not exist. Start to see that what you call evil, somebody else calls good. And what you call good, somebody else calls evil. That depends on your ego and what its agenda is. Start to question whether God exists at all. Start to question what God is. Start to question your religion and your culture. Start to question your culture's exceptionalism. If you're blue, you think your culture is the best. Start to notice that there are many other cultures which are equally great, if not better. And to help you with that, go visit other countries, other cultures. Do a lot of traveling. Eat exotic food that you would normally never eat. Break your culture's conventions. Start to notice how arbitrary culture is. Start to notice cultural relativity. Start to notice how the hierarchy of your civilization is repressive and how it hurts other people, especially minorities. Try to put yourself in the shoes of the minorities who are victims of the hierarchy of your caste system or of your culture. Put yourself, if you're a man, like if you're a white Christian male, put yourself into the shoes of a black woman or uh, put yourself into the shoes of a, of a gay um, transgender person and try to think of what would my life be like if I was like that rather than a white Christian guy. How would the hierarchy that I'm in be mm, prejudicial against me? Acknowledge the commonality of all people. Notice that all people, regardless of their race, regardless of their gender, or whatever beliefs they hold, all people are basically just people. None are better than any other. Acknowledge the validity of other religions. Notice that it's more fun to be independent rather than to be reliant on a culture or a society. Start to read self-help books about success. Tony Robbins style stuff. Stop being an anal rule keeper. Relax your rules. Don't be so disciplined. Develop a thirst for personal success. That's what's going to move you into orange. Start to have a desire to climb the hierarchy and become the best and to achieve something of yourself, something material, not religious. Notice that separation of church and state is a good thing. Secular society is actually a good thing. It's good that you don't live in a theocracy. Start to study history and the abuses that you find in history of stage blue. Study the Nazis. Study Hitler. 
Study communism, study Marxism in all its different forms. And notice that that's all blue. Study the Crusades. Study the Spanish conquistadors who butchered and murdered savages or what they called savages um, in the New World. Start to see the, um, the enslavement of other races that has happened throughout human history. Start to see all those evils and abuses, the cruelty of all of that, and how that's all enforced by these stage blue ways of thinking. That will really open your eyes. Read lots of diverse books. Start to become a real student for yourself. Don't just blindly accept what your culture tells you. Read and research for yourself. Read lots of different perspectives. Read perspectives from, from minorities and from women and from different cultures and from this and that. So you get a much broader view than just your little circle. The problem with stage blue is that stage blue surrounds itself with just stage blue and it just lives within a bubble of stage blue and it doesn't see anything beyond that. It's not exposed to, to different opinions and perspectives. Go to a diverse university and you will see this diversity of perspectives and cultures. Start to study science. That will move you into orange. Practice radical open-mindedness as I talk about in some of my episodes. Notice that reality is much more complex and nuanced and that black and white thinking doesn't work very well. Embrace your feminine side. Stage blue is terrible at embracing his feminine side. Acknowledge that humans are not superior to animals. Acknowledge that men are not superior to women. Acknowledge that whites are not superior to any other minorities. And finally, the master key for transcending any stage, including stage blue, is contemplation and self-reflection. Sit down, think all of this through, study it, take notes, ruminate upon it, reflect on your own behaviors, connect it with human history that you learned through all your reading and that should shift you into the next stage which for you will be orange so that's blue basically in a lot of detail in conclusion i want to stress that you be very careful about abusing the information that I'm teaching to you here. It's very easy. It's very easy to start to stereotype people and to demonize people. You can look around and say, oh, look at that blue person and that blue country and that blue business and that blue uh, church and that blue organization. Look at how bad they are and how evil they are. Look, they're going to become communists and Nazis and this and that. Be very careful about that. I've talked about the excesses of blue but you have to remember that most blue people are not fanatics. And these excesses come out sometimes, but oftentimes not. The majority of the time, they don't show up. The majority of blue people are just decent, hardworking, blue collar, you know, your typical church going grandma type of lady. You know, she's probably not a neo Nazi. Uh, so be careful with these stereotypes and demonizing others. If you start stereotyping and judging and demonizing and moralizing too much, using spiral dynamics as your weapon, then what are you doing? You're just actually taking what I taught you here and you're entrenching yourself in stage blue. And now you're acting it out. That's not the intent of this teaching. The intent of this teaching is to have you go meta, to see the world from a, from a much higher perspective. Remember that blue is not good, nor is it bad. Also remember that people fit into multiple stages. People are not simple, and this spiral dynamics model is not meant to be a simple model. It's not like a person is either blue 
or orange or green and nothing else. It's not an either or. Most of the time, because people are complicated and they're evolving, they're always evolving, whether they know it or not, they're usually somewhere in between and they're usually somewhat of a, of a mixture of things. Same thing with countries. Very few countries are strictly blue. You might say Saudi Arabia is strictly blue. No, it's not. Certain elements within Saudi Arabia are very blue, but certain elements are very orange. A lot of the Middle East, you might say the entire Middle East is blue. No, it's not. That's very simplistic. That's way too simplistic. You need to see that in the Middle East, in countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia, um, and then you have countries like Dubai, which is very orange, right? You have, you have, uh, you have various mixes. So these countries can be like 50% blue, 50% orange, or 75% blue, 25% orange, or vice versa, 20, 75% orange, 25% uh, blue, right? You have different mixes and human beings individually can also be like that. And it doesn't just have to be blue and orange. It can also have a little mixture of green in there and even maybe a little mixture of red in there. So it's complicated. It's like a painting, right? Of different colors. But you can still look at a painting and just kind of eyeball and say, well, this painting, yes, it's got a bunch of colors in it, but basically it's an orange painting or it's basically a blue painting or it's 50% it's blue, 50% orange. You can kind of eyeball it, right? It's a model. It, we're oversimplifying reality here. That's the point of models is to oversimplify. It's to generalize. And uh, be careful not to confuse the model for the territory. Models are limited. Spiral dynamics should not be your only tool for understanding politics and societies and governments and individuals. It's just one tool in your tool belt. Recognize it has its limits and you will notice them as you start to apply this model, you'll start to notice these limits. So acknowledge that. If anything here that I said kind of triggers you and you disagree with it, remember, uh, I might have said something here that offends you because you are in stage blue and maybe you feel like I've mischaracterized stage blue. Uh, no, I didn't. I tried to be very fair and objective here. Just notice that the biggest impediment to growing to new stages is resistance, denial, and ego. The ego is trying to maintain homeostasis. The ego is trying to keep itself at blue, if you are in blue. It doesn't want to evolve. This is not exclusive to blue. This is true of orange. This is also true of, of green. It's also true of yellow. Stages do not want to evolve. They're stubborn. Blue is especially stubborn, but they're all pretty stubborn. They're all egotistical in their own unique ways. So, um, the best thing you can do is just stop judging. Stop judging the model. Stop judging yourself. Stop judging other people. And notice that you got some inner work to do. Judging is not inner work. Judging is distraction. The inner work is the contemplation, self-reflection. It's the studying of all this stuff. It's thinking about it. It's analyzing your own behaviors and noticing like, oh yeah, I'm a part of this organization here. I'm a part of this online forum here. And that's a very blue influence on my life. And if I want to evolve to orange, maybe I should leave that forum. Stuff like that. That's where the real uh, growth happens. Remember, you're going to have to evolve through blue. You can't just escape blue. You can't skip blue. You can't wish it away. Be honest about where you are. If you're at blue, admit that you're at blue. Admit these limitations. Become aware of them. Bring them out into the light of consciousness rather than stuffing them under the rug into the shadows. And notice that you're going to have to evolve into stage orange. And there's probably stuff in stage orange that you don't like, that you don't want to evolve into. Yes, that's why it's difficult. If that wasn't the case, then you would already be at the very top of the whole hierarchy. You would be a perfectly evolved human being. You would be a Buddha or a Christ, and you're not. Why? Because you got this massive ego. You have all these ideologies, all these opinions, all these judgments, 
all these fears, all these emotions and things you hide and repress, all this guilt and shame, and and you're very uh, uh, dogmatic and you've been programmed with all these ideas. And so now that's that's a lot of stuff to overcome. It'll take you years, maybe decades to overcome that just to go from blue to orange. And that's just one jump. And then you're going to have to go higher and higher and higher about that. But we'll talk about that in the next episode. So the next episode will be orange. All right, I'm done here. This was, uh, this was a lot of material to cover. Um, but uh, this is only one-sixth of everything we need to talk about for you to really understand spiral dynamics. So I'm out of here. Please click the like button for me. Come uh, also check out actualize.org. Check out my book list. Check out the Life Purpose course. Check out my blog. Check out the forum. And uh, speaking of the book list, I updated it recently with 17 new books. Uh, so go go check those out. These books will transform your whole life. And uh, make sure that you stick around for the rest of the whole series, which will be coming in the future. <laughs>